For this week's lesson, you will need your red book open to page 11. Of course, you need your mallets and your bells set up, and you never know, you might need a pencil in case you wanna write anything in. We are going to start with both our scales today, so let's start with the B-flat major scale. We're gonna to try to do this in octaves today, and we'll do it the easiest way that we can. Um, the first thing we need to do, and just in case you don't remember what an octave, octave means you play in double stops. That means you play both sticks at the same time, one on a low version and one on a high version. So a low B-flat and a high B-flat at the same time, is an, our octave B flats. The way we're gonna practice this is we're gonna do one hand at a time. So let's, that because because you can't do alternate sticking when you're doing octaves because both hands are being used at the same time. So we need to practice playing the scale just with your left hand. So put your right hand down by your side, get your left hand set, and we're going to do um, one whole note. So this is the easiest possible way where you hit the note, get off of it, and go to the, go over to the next note. Okay, here we go. Whole notes on the B-flat B scale on the low octave just with your left hand. One, two, whole notes go. Move to C now. Go to D now. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Going backwards. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, when you talk about something called shifting, when you are hitting a B flat and you know the next note that you're gonna play is C, you should actually come off the B flat towards the C. So I end up over the next note. Instead of going down, up, over, down, you can go up on a diagonal and end up over the next note. So that's something to think about. Now we're gonna do our right hand and your right hand is gonna be starting on the middle B flat, okay? Uh, most of you are probably right-handed, so you'll find that this is easier. And when we do both hands together, you'll probably have to actually watch your left hand, but we'll talk about that in a second. So let's do a right hand on the higher octave B flat. One, two, same scale, go. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Go backwards. Two, three, four. Two, three, four four, two, three, four. Okay, here's the trick. We gotta do them both at the same time. But everybody always asks me, Miss Block, I don't know where to look. You're right, you can't, <laughs> you can't see both of them at the exact same time. So what I need you to do is use your peripheral vision. You kind of actually look in between your hands and you can see both at the same time. In reality, you're probably gonna have to watch your left hand. Because what's gonna happen is you keep going, your left hand's gonna try to get really close to your right hand and it can't, it has to stay in its own area. So it takes a little bit of practice. I used to be able to do this with my eyes closed, probably can't do that anymore, but the idea is that you get muscle memory on how to do it and you don't have to think about it so much anymore. Let's try it. Octave, one octave, or no, sorry. We're not doing a one octave scale. We are playing your B flat major scale in octaves, okay? So get set over the two B flats, and here we go. One, two, ready, play. B flat, shift to C. Now, D, get over to D. E flat, now. Go to F, now. Backwards, E flat. Go to D, now. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, so that might have been really sloppy for your first time through. That's okay, I couldn't hear you anyway, right? You're going to practice that, and you're going to record it for me in octaves as part of of an assignment. Not this week, but it will be an assignment at some point. But eventually, we want to get our hands moving together like a big machine. So that's what we're going to work on. Let's really quick just do our um, C minor scale. We're going to just play two, half, two quarter notes on each one. So, okay. Remember, there's no B flat in the C minor scale. Um, there's also no A. Like A is, we learned low A last time. There's no A in any of these scales yet. Okay, so let's do two um, quarter notes on each. Yes, you can double for the scale. Two on each, starting with your right hand. C minor. Here we go. One, two, two on each. For 
some reason, I just really like the minor scale. I think it sounds really cool on bells. It's unexpected because bells are such a bright sounding instrument and they sometimes sound so happy, but the minor scale actually sounds kind of creepy and I like it. So I like the minor scale. You can have whichever favorite you like, or maybe you don't have a favorite. That's okay. All right, we are going to start on mallet page 11, number 38. This new song is called Marianne. Um, and I wanted to show you guys something that you might not know about or you forgot about. On the back inside cover of your book, it has every note, like we were just learning um, low A, like, oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, low A is down here, right? And it shows you where it is on your bells. So if you see a note in music and you don't know where it is, you should look at this and and figure out where it is on your bells. Here's all the sharps and flats. That's the top row, okay? And here's all the notes that are on the bottom row of bells. So please use that. If you're not sure what to hit, you can't just hit random notes because that doesn't count as playing the right note. It's not like, oh, I hit something. That must be, it counts. No, it's actually be, it's worse than hitting nothing, okay? So make sure if you don't know what you're supposed to be hitting, use that picture on the back inside cover of your book. Let's look at 38. Uh, we always need to check for repeat signs and find out where the end of the song is. So let's just use your stick here and scan through. I don't see a repeat sign, but you should notice that the song is two lines long. So we don't stop after the first line. We have to go down to the second line. Um, solo and soli we don't worry about until we're in band, so we'll talk about that later. Um, and this song uses... Well, it doesn't use every note. It does have low A, but it doesn't have G. It doesn't have the high note. So let's say the notes for 38. There's a lot of ties. So there's a lot of times where the notes are going to ring because they're tied together and you don't have to hit them again. So let's make sure we know where that is. Um, of course, if you need to write it in before we say it, you can do that. Pause and do that. I would not try to write it in while I'm saying it because it's going to go too fast. So if you want to write it in, fine. Pause that and then say it with me. Here we go. 38, saying the notes. One. Two, say the notes. D, F, B flat, D, D, C, E flat, rest, rest. C, E flat, E flat, A, C, C, B flat, D. Go to the second line. D, D, F, F. B flat, D, 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 C, E flat, rest, rest, C, E flat, E flat, A, C, C, B flat, B flat. Now, for me, I've been playing bells a very long time, and this song, um, I can, I can play this without looking at my hands. I can tell you right now, you're not, most of you will not be able to just play this straight through without doing it really slow and looking down and up and down and up because there's all kinds of skips. Most of the notes are not next door to each other. There's like spaces in between the notes. A little, a little hack for bells that I'm noticing is that when you have the notes that are tied, like I'm looking on the first line, there's an E flat tied to an E flat. That note rings for four beats, and then you have another two beats of rest. And we know on bells, if you have a, a four-beat note, you hit it once, and then you don't worry about it again. So I would use that ringing time and the rest time to look ahead and see, and you should be moving your stick to the next note that you actually have to hit. Don't wait till the last second to be like, oh, what note is it? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay? So that's like a little hack. Nobody needs to know that you're not doing anything for those beats when it's ringing. So make, make use of that time and look ahead, okay? Um, I will give you the track for this song to play along, but you will have to practice a bunch before you try to play along because it's fast, okay? So we'll go pretty slow right now. If this is still even too fast for you after you try the first couple of notes and you're just like, nope, that's fine. Pause it, do it on your own, and then you can come back and play with me once you feel more comfortable, okay? This book is challenging your mind right now. There aren't any new notes in this song. They're challenging your mind on how fast can you read the notes and how fast can you find the right note with your stick, okay? That's on purpose. It's supposed to be hard. Don't get discouraged, okay? Here we go. I'm going to start with a D on my left hand and a, an F on my right hand. 
the sticking's all over the place. So as long as you don't use the same hand for the whole song, you're good to go. Let's give it a try. One, two, 38, play. I'm looking ahead to see that I need a C. I'm looking ahead to the next line. Ready, go. Look ahead where it says C. Ready, go. I would say that is by far the hardest song we've ever played so far. So if it's like, wow, I just need to work on the first line, and then tomorrow I'll work on the second line, totally okay, right? Because you have a whole week to get your song recorded for me, and this isn't even the song you're recording. So, um... Uh, they gave us a little hint after we just got to the end of 38. It says write in all the notes before you play. You don't have to do that unless you need it to be able to read the music. Um, you are going to record 39 for me. So can we check that out for a second? Um, we need to remember that if there's a repeat sign in a song that you are recording for me, you need to actually play the song twice. It's not optional. And I can't give you full credit if you skip the repeat sign. That's like if the song's two lines long and you only played the first line. That's only half the song. Okay, the reason they made a repeat sign is so they don't have to print the music twice. It's a direct copy and paste before they'd copy and paste. Because remember, they had to write music with like a pen, like a feather with ink when this was invented. When music was invented, it was like a guy dipping his feather in the ink and trying to write this by hand. So they came up with the repeat sign so you didn't have to rewrite the whole line. Now, obviously, it's done by computer. We still use the repeat sign and you have to play the repeat sign. Okay. Um, Crusaders March, which is number 39, uses every single note that you know. It uses low A all the way up to the high G. So that's all seven notes. Okay, same thing. You can write the notes in before you play. I will give you the track to play along with. Um, you don't need to replay along with it in the recording, but of course you can if you'd like to. Um, the track is fast. If you can't play it that fast to record it, then don't use the track. Just play it at your own speed, a steady speed. Okay, so happy practicing and I look forward to seeing your videos for number 39.